Okay, so basically, I will talk about fundamental dependent PDF, uh, PDF. Uh, but this kind of uh, so this object, okay, you, you know about this. So they give information about the distribution of patterns inside the product, so the proton, and they give information at the same time on the longitudinal momentum fraction and also on the transverse momentum distribution of patterns in, inside the proton, okay? Uh, and so this kind of object appears either in the TMD uh, factorization, which for some processes has been uh, proven to all orders, or you can find also the object in the high energy or KT factorization, which has not been uh, proven to, to all others. Okay, and in case of uh, the high energy factorization, these transverse momentum PDFs they are called uh, sometimes unintegrated PDFs. So I prefer to use this terminology in, in order to avoid the confusion with a TMD factorization, which is not the same. Uh, uh, the typical uh, cross section, differential cross section here, computed in the uh, um, KT factorization looks like this. So you, it's uh, very similar to linear factorization. So you have the convolution of one PDF for the proton. Uh, Yes, one PDF for one proton, another PDF for the other proton. So I'm talking about PT collisions. And you have uh, this cross section, which is not an on shell but off shell cross section. So it's much more complicated to com compute com compared to on shell cross section. And currently, next leading order are, are not completely available. And the main difference, uh, except of this, the main difference with linear uh, factorization, so is this uh, dependence on, on transverse momentum of uh, initial uh, quark or gluon. And you can see it's important that typically you do uh, the integration up to very large scale. Uh, okay, and so I will discuss a, a specific a kind of unintegrated PDF, which are called KMRW PDF for Kimber, Martin, Rinsky, and, and Watts. And I will discuss this PDF in particular because they are uh, widely used, uh, because they have a simple expression, expression, so it's very easy to do some phenomenological work with these functions. But they have some issues. And so recently, uh, uh, several papers have, have been published on these uh, issues and possible potential uh, solutions. And so I will uh, talk about this. Uh, so the motivation. Is that one of the motivation for this work is that uh, if you do some calculation with this KMRW PDF, or if you use other kind of integrated PDF, like the pattern branching PDF or some PDF with, with the CC uh, FM uh, evolution equation, you will get very different results. So there are some kind of contradictions. And so ideally, you, you would like to. to <laughs> To make uh, all you, you want your final results to be not so much dependent on, on the, the PDF. And uh, as I was saying, so it is known that uh, there are several issues, internal issues, with this specific uh, set of unintegrated PDF. So, just to, to have an idea here, so I have some kind of color plug. Uh, so the lines which are in the same color, it's because the issues are related. So for instance, one of the issues is that they use a pseudocode factor, which should be in principle smaller than one, but sometimes it is larger than one. So this is one of the issues. Uh, the normalization, the, the relation between an integrated PDF and uh, collinear PDF is this equation here. And you can see that one issue here is that uh, this condition constraints the unintegrated uh, PDF 
only on the range uh, from zero to mu square, but not beyond. Okay, uh, the, uh, this uh, this function is not uh, constrained. Uh, for pt square, which goes from mu square to s, for instance. Uh, so you cannot anything be purified. Related to this, you have another estimation of the d and d meson perception. And still related to this, uh, there are some theoretical reasons to, 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 to claim that it's better here to do the integral up to infinity. Otherwise, you can have some kind of like the advantages associated with the use of like Lycon gauge. And do not ask more detail about this. I just read it. I, I know this is something known, but I'm not a specialist on this. Another kind of issue is that uh, it's also known. It's not uh, not only me saying that, but there are several work on this. So another issue is that the differential and integral definition of this PDF uh, do, do not exactly agree. And uh, if you use the integral definition, you will see that in fact it does not obey exactly this relation. So this is also an issue. Um, and basically, my, my claim is that if you change the uh, normalization condition, so if now you use this normalization condition, you will solve at, at once all these issues just by changing the normalization condition. So what I'm saying is that what is uh, wrong here is simply this uh, normalization condition which, which should be changed by, by this one and so this is the claim and then i will just uh, show an illustrative example of a modification of this pdf which will be this equation and you will see that effectively uh, we, we will solve all these issues um, okay but before let me remind uh, a, a bit how it works so this uh, KMRW uh, unintegrated PDF. So again, you want to, in the usual uh, definition, you want to fulfill this uh, normalization condition. And so the differential definition is given by these two uh, equations. And so you can see easily that uh, if you put, if you integrate this uh, from mu square to zero, you will effectively get exactly this. Uh, collinear uh, PDF. Uh, so the, uh, uh, if you use the differential equation, this normalization uh, condition is, uh, is obeyed exactly. Uh, for this, you need to, here the, the function, Ta is the feedback of factor, which is defined by this equation. And you can see that the issue here is that when kt square is larger than mu square, then this uh, feedback of factor is larger than one. And in fact, if, uh, if I go to the beginning, then if you look at the equation for the first section, you can see that indeed you do the integration on the transverse momentum up to a scale which is much larger than mu square. Because, for instance, if you are looking to the PT distribution of a dimension, if you look at, at PT uh, of 3G, for instance, so typically one choose mu square equal to PT square. So mu square here will be around 9 dB square, but S of course is much larger. So the integration of KT here, uh, at some point, K KT will be larger than, than U. And then the consequence of this is that this pseudo factor will be larger than one. So this is an issue that it's easy to solve. Uh, what good people usually is uh, they just say, okay, let's take this expression when KT is smaller than U, and let's just use one when kt is larger than mu. And so you can write this uh, by, by this equation. So this equation is seen the same. When uh, mu square is larger than kt square, you use this uh, definition for ta. And yet when kt square is larger than mu square, just use one. So this is what do people usually in order to solve this issue of the decay factor larger than one. Uh, then you can take the derivative here. Uh, when you take the derivative with respect to uh, the PDF, you need to use uh, the Diglap equation. You can use the Diglap equation. And in fact, you, you use the uh, cutoff dependent Diglap equation, which is written here. So uh, I, I, this is okay, this is my notation, but 
uh, it, it is to say that uh, you here you, you, you use some methods in order to avoid uh, that, that divergences, right? So due to the splitting functions. So we can take the derivative here. You use uh, the Dilat, uh, the dependent Dilat equation. And so you will obtain the integral definitions. Okay, uh, it's uh, the, the step, step of speculation is not uh, really important. It does not matter, but uh, this is uh, the expression is exactly that. And uh, I don't know if you have some, some question here. Or... So, could you speak a little bit louder? My expression for normalization. Uh, I, I, I will say, okay, uh, we will talk about this after, yes. But I'm, yes, my, my claim is that if you change this for this, you, you will solve all the issues. Yes. Yeah, you say what you're saying is that integrating up to infinity or, or integrating up to a large scale is the same because it decreases fast. Yeah. Yes, this is true, but for instance, uh, when you, the, the point is that in, in the exa example I gave, for instance, when you have a new square equal to uh, nine GV square, this is not a large scale. And the other issue is that indeed, the pattern branching, like the pattern branching, some integrated PDF, uh, goes very fast to, to zero, but not this, not the KMA W PDF. So this is the point that uh, people think that sometimes this uh, range of KT, which is between new and infinity, is not uh, relevant, but it is because in a previous, for instance, uh, in a previous application, I just play to cutting this tail, and the, the different the, the, the cross section was uh, three times smaller. So in fact, this uh, part of the distribution does contribute uh, a lot uh, with this set of, uh, with this set of, because it does not uh, fall so, so fast. Yeah, I will show you that. Benjamin, Benjamin. This is the point that here we arrive to the integral definition. And so the issue with this integral definition is that uh, if you try to, to, to compute again, this equation, you will see that it will not obey exactly this equation. And this is due to the cutoff. Because here, uh, the, if you want the cutoff dependent Dilap equation to be uh, very close to the uh, exact Dilap equation, you want this cutoff to be close to one. And sometimes it is not the case, uh, in particular in, in large X. And so basically, uh, at the end, the integral definition and the differential definition are not e equivalent because here, this is the uh, exact linear factorization, uh, exact PDF, which obeys the exact Diglav equation. But when in the derivation you use this cutoff dependent Diglav equation, if this cutoff is too far from one, then uh, it's not so accurate. And so it is known that the integral definition does not obey exactly the normalization condition. And it is not exactly equivalent to the differential definition. So this is another issue. The should depend on 
the splitting function should depend on the distance of the field. It should depend on the. I, I mean, for, for, for the moment, I just uh, presenting the usual uh, time RW PDF. Uh, the uh, Speaking function. Yes, yes, I mean. Uh, yes, so uh, the last one that which are working on, on this. <laughs> Yeah, no, for, for, for sure, for sure. Here is just uh, the presentation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but, but I do agree. Uh, it's not, I think that it's, it's, it's still a matter of uh, research because there is a guy in Mexico which is working on, on this from the momentum dependent speaking function. And but uh, it's kind of it's kind of, of, of new. But in, in any case, yeah, I'm, I'm just presenting the usual formalism of of, of, of the mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and okay, and so let me show you some some uh, proposed. The, 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 um, uh, you you want to work for the quark? Another one for the gluon also. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the the, the, bit, the formalism like that. Uh, uh, I mean, okay. The, the bit, the bit, the formalism like that. But I think that one, once I I read that one of the advantage of this Sudeikov factor here is that you can see that this. I'm just get the relation. No, they, they just put it by n basically. Basically, they, they put it by n. But why it is useful? Because you know that. If you look at this uh, equation, and uh, if you forget the Sudeikov factor here, how do you get this equation? It's just from here, right? You take here, you take the derivative respect to uh, mu square, and so you, you you will get this equation without the Sudeikov factor, right? But the issue is that at large x, uh, the collinear PDF at large x, uh, the decrease, the, the derivative is, is negative. And so it will now they, they put it by end. <laughs> yes. Okay, but the formalism is, is like that. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me show you uh, two potential solutions to this second issue. So to, to the issue that the integral and differential uh, definition are, are not equivalent. And as a consequence, the integral uh, definition do not obey exactly the normalization condition. So some uh, two groups propose to use instead uh, cutoff dependent collinear PDF. So in this relation here, instead of having the collinear PDF, they propose to use cutoff dependent collinear PDF. And so it is okay to use the cutoff dependent bootstrap equation. And that's it. And so they the, the propose to, to use this relation. Uh, what, what I want to do is the following that uh, people use but basically people use this equation for transverse momentum dependent pdf this is the can of w updf this equation is used a lot but it has all these issues and uh my claim is that uh several people try to, to solve this issue and my claim is that if you change the normalization condition here for this one you will solve all these issues. This is just what I want to show. No. <laughs> okay, so uh, these guys are just proposed to use a uh, cutoff dependent collinear uh, PDF. But of course, I do not like this proposition because if delta is really far from one, 
So this function is really found of the usual collinear uh, PDF, right? And so you will not have the fact that, for instance, if you integrate the uh, PDF for the up quark, then you get uh, two, which is the number of up quark in the, the proton, right? You do not have the sum rules and etc. So well, the, 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 the issue is, uh, okay, what is the inter interpretation of this cut of dependent PDF? And basically, I don't know, there is no interpretation. Right? What do you want to, to do with that? Uh, and so there is a second uh, proposition by uh, Maxime Nefedov and uh, Salayev. And basically, uh, they impose, uh, they, they choose, they impose what, what is the integral definition, and they impose to this integral definition to be equivalent to the differential definitions. And doing that, they get a, a differential equation. And when you solve this differential equation, you find a new expression for this pseudo factor. And now this pseudo factor depends on x. So the, the, the good things in their proposition is that now they solve two issues. The integral definition is equivalent to the uh, differential definition. And uh, the differential, uh, the integral definition obey exactly the normalization condition. But the issue in the formalism is that they still have a pseudo factor larger than one. And now you cannot solve this issue by uh, as uh, previously, by uh, by doing uh, some kind of modification of this pseudo factor, because this function is a solution of a differential equation. So if you change the definition, uh, you, you break uh, the equivalence of the differential in integral definition. So basically, the uh, so the solution to this issue is not really satisfying. Now we have more issues with this formalism. As I said previously, if you compute, for instance, deep side production with uh, this uh, Kalina uh, UPDF, or if you use another set of PDF, you get very different results. So, for instance, here in green, you have uh, the experimental data. The full line is obtained with this uh, Kalina UPDF, and this dotted line is obtained with this with this set of integrated PDF. And you can see that. There is really a con con uh, contradiction. And also, here this is a little order calculation. So you can wonder what will happen if you add some next leading order correction. Here in this case, there is no room for, for more. Uh, there is no room for next leading order correction. Okay. And finally, finally, there is also, in my opinion, a, a big issue which is completely uh, ignored. But, which is that if you use this time uh, PDF, and if you want to compute the dimension, and if you include just the charm uh, UN contribution to dimension, you will get this uh, red line, which is uh, which overestimates the cross section by about a factor of four. And if, instead, if you use pattern branching in integrated PDF, you get uh, a good result. Here you are below the data because the beyond beyond contribution is missing. But you can see that you have an issue with this PDF because they are too large. They, they give a too, too large contribution. And this is related to the fact that a huge part of the of this PDF is not constrained by the normalization condition because uh, this PDF are constrained, the, the transverse momentum dependent is constrained only between zero and mu, but not between zero and infinity, right? So uh, now let me show uh, which uh, I did a very small modification of this uh, equation in order to fulfill this uh, normalization condition when you do an integration up to infinity. So here first, I change kt for mu. Why? Because if you integrate this up to infinity and up to zero, uh, and if you let kt here, then you will get the collinear PDF with zero here and infinity, and these objects are basically unknown. Okay. So here yeah, I just change kt from mu. Uh, you will get exact normalization if the pseudo factor uh, fulfills uh, this condition. And so the minimal modification of the pseudo factor is to change here mu square by infinity, basically. So this is exactly what happened here. Here you change mu square by infinity. In the pseudo factor, you also change mu square by infinity. 
And you will see if you look at this equation, you will see that indeed it, 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 it fulfills uh, this equation. And also, you can see that we already solved one of the issues because now this pseudo factor is always smaller than one. Always smaller than one. Yes, because before they were using uh, this expression and it was larger than one when kt square was uh, larger than mu square. Now it's simply uh, impossible. I, I change a bit the notation here. Uh, I put uh, this dot comma because there is still a dependence on mu because of the uh, angular ordering cutoff, because of the cutoff here. But uh, kt mu now does not mean that we have an integration of kt to mu. But the integration is from kt square to infinity. But there is still a dependence on, on mu here. Okay, so this is a, just this small modification will uh, solve all the issues. Uh, and basically, in my opinion, it does because now this uh, normalization condition is, is uh, fulfilled. Uh, okay, so for instance, okay, now you, you want to compute this is the uh, differential. Uh, definition now you want to compute the integral definition you, you just need to take the derivative here now the pdf here does not depend on kt so you do not need to use the cutoff dependent declap equation and so uh, if you remember it was the this the use of the declap dependent cutoff equation sorry it was the use of the cutoff dependent declap equation previously which was which was generating this issue with the Non-equivalence of the two definition. Now there is not this. You just take the derivative here. You obtain this equation, and and this equation is exactly this is the integral definition, and it, it is exactly equivalent to the differential definition. Okay, and here this is just the plot. So in blue you can see the usual uh, KMR uh, distribution for the gluon. In red, this is the, my, my uh, proposition. So this is in red, this is this equation, and in black, just to compare, this is another set of an integrated PDF which is called a pattern branching and integrated PDF. So you can see, Matt, that indeed the pattern branching is uh, falling very fast, but not the kind of uh, UPDF, and this is exactly exactly the reason why this large tail here. Give a larger, in fact, contribution to the cross section, and this is why you have an overestimation of the of the dimension cross section. <clears throat> so now, with this modification, you can see that the main effect is that the shape is the same, but it is kind of risque, which is obvious because before here, uh, the integration up to mu square was equal to this quantity. Now this is the integration up to infinity. Which is equal to this quantity. So, of course, the integrated PDF here has to be smaller, right? Now, this kind of MR PDF are not extracted from full data, they are simply built from Colmina PDF. Okay, so this, this is a, uh, the plot is here, okay? And uh, okay, so, so, so let me tell you. What we, what issues we already solved. So as I was saying, since we are using now this normalization, first we do not have issue with these divergences associated to the use of the Lycon gauge. And I, I cannot sorry give more details on this. Now, as we have seen, the pseudo factor is always smaller than one, which was not the case, and which is not the case also in the proposition published recently. Uh, by by construction, we have a, an exact 
the, the PDF obeys the, exactly to the normalization condition. So here I can show the plot also. So here, this is the normalization condition. In full line, you have this object to the left. And uh, in the dotted line is this uh, the integration of the PDF. And you can see that now you have a really good agreement between both. If you do that with the usual kind of PDF, it, it will clearly not be so nice. You, you, you will have a, a, a clear difference between the, the two plots. So there is a, now the, the integral definition obey exactly the normalization conditions. Uh, also, we do not have an overestimation of dimension cross section. So here again, I can show a plot. So now this is a plot with this modified KMR uh, PDF. And now it's not simply the uh, it's not simply the uh, Leon chan to Leon chan contribution, but this plot has, has been open using all contribution to the Maison production, and in particular Leon chan to Leon chan and Leon Leon to Sisiba. Okay, and so you can see that now there is not anymore uh, an overestimation of the cross section, and this is directly related to the fact that basically this uh, equation you can see that this is a red line and it is uh, this k compared to the blue line thanks to the uh, normalization condition so there, there is no overestimation of the dimension perception and, uh, and and, and that, that's it so we already solve all these issues simply by changing this normalization condition and uh, finally I just want to say a word on the pattern branching interpretation of this object. So in the case of the usual uh, KMR PDF, what is the pattern branching interpretation? So it's not clear to me, in fact, but basically the, the, so what they did is to simplify this two scale evolution by using just a one scale evolution and then at the end, uh, in the last step, to uh, add uh, the, the second scale. So first, what they, they do is this, they define this uh, transaction momentum PDF, which depends only on, on, on KT, uh, like that. So this is uh, basically this is a develop equation, but without, the, they do not include the uh, virtual contribution. And then they ask for no splitting between scale KT and scale mu. And this is implemented by the Sudakov uh, factor T, uh, T of uh, KT and mu, okay? And so the final object, the transaction momentum dependence, uh, uh, which PDF would depend on KT square and mu square, is obtained simply by the multiplication of uh, this uh, one scale transaction momentum PDF and this two Dakar factor. This is what they did. Okay. Uh, I think that here the integrated interpretation is a, a bit complicated because the object here in the left, it tells you yeah, that the evolution scale mu. And the transaction momentum is not the same. So you can have one value of mu and uh, uh, a distribution for kt, right? But in the right part of this equation, there is an ambiguity between uh, what is happening here. Well, what is here? So this is the evolution scale, or it is transaction momentum. And it is not clear. And in fact, in their derivation, basically, they assume that the evolution scale and the transaction momentum is a bit the same. And so you have, you have, this is not really consistent. And you can see that what you want to avoid is, uh, you can see that this Sudakov uh, factor, it avoids uh, uh, emissions between scale kt and mu, but not between uh, scale mu and infinity, or not between scale mu and uh, a large scale s. But if you remember, when you compute the cross section, you integrate on kt over to a very large scale. So I, I think this is inconsistent. And this is the reason why at the end, you get a, a Sudakov factor, which is larger than one. But now if you take my proposition, you have a much clearer interpretation in, term, in terms of uh, pattern branching. First, uh, you have uh, an initial pattern, which is collinear to the proton, which is a typical picture with the Glatt equation. It has an evolution up to scale mu. And the number of these patterns is given by the uh, number density uh, f of x and u squared, right? And then at the end, you will generate the transition momentum just by one perturbative uh, splitting. 
And so in that way, you 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 you, you, you gen generate this transaction method. And the probability for one splitting is given by this equation here. Uh, if you want just one splitting, then you need to forbid another one splitting. And so the in order to forbid another one splitting between scale new, uh, scale kt and infinity, you need, in fact, uh, the this pseudocode factor, uh, the, the, the new pseudocode factor, right? Uh, which expression was given by uh, the expression was given here, okay? Yeah, it is always smaller than one. And uh, and uh, and that's all. So if you put everything together, all this probability uh, distribution together, so you have the number of patterns multiplied by the probability to generate the transverse momentum of KT, multiplied by the probability for no emission between KT and infinity, and you get, in fact, exactly uh, the expression I, uh, I had for the transverse momentum for the integral definition of, of the uh, new kind of PDF. Okay, so in that case, I believe that the interpretation in terms of pattern branching is much more clear. And this is why I guess that uh, now this pseudocode so, so factor is always smaller than one, that uh, we, we, we build some kind of consistent uh, pattern branching picture. And, and that's all. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, this normalization condition is better in itself. First, it is used by other integrated PDF. Second, it is what you have uh, in the pattern model uh, for the transverse momentum dependent uh, PDF. Uh, secondly, it avoids uh, divergences associated to light and gauge. And finally, it contains these functions on the full transverse momentum range. Uh, I've read uh, I, I a small, uh, uh, what, I, what I did is just a small modification of the usual definition of the KMR PDF in order to, to fulfill this condition. And what we've seen is that all the issues presented in the beginning of this presentation are, has been completely solved. Uh, and basically, this procedure effectively with case this distribution, but uh, the, the shape is the same. And, uh, and okay, so I, that's all. I think this is important because uh, it reduces the contradiction between. Uh, the KMR PDF and other set of PDF. And there are recently there are really a uh, lot of publications which are in, in contradiction. So some so with uh, the KMR PDF, you can reproduce observables without leading or next leading order calculation. While uh, if you use other kind of PDF, you get another conclusion and you need next leading order uh, calculation. Uh, with the KMR PDF, you overestimate the dimension per section, etc. So there are a lot of issues. Which uh, are sort basically if you just uh, ch change the normalization condition. So, what they were going to stop using this function that come from this procedure? Is that what you want? So, in, in my opinion, ah, in, my opinion right. in my opinion, ah, right. yes, in my opinion, people should just stop using this function, which from the point of view of QCD are not so good. But yes, if the teacher. Teach... No, <laughs> sorry. Come from exactly. <laughs> so this is a this is a pattern branching an integrated in, in, an integrated PDF, which I prefer. They are extracted from from data, from and they looks uh, very different. But uh, for some reason, people keep using this uh, <laughs> this PDF, and so you have some conflict, and so you, you need to to give some argument to say okay, which one is is the better, you know. Minister, it's been given for the very nice and big tone. I think that Marat wanted to say something. <laughs>
Yes, I it will affect any any processes. Uh, as I showed, if you do uh, for for Gitsan, yeah. you, you get a very different uh, uh, prediction if you use this kind of the app or if you use uh, the pattern branch to the app. Yes, because um, for example, what, what people do in the case of uh, the method, they completely ignore the issue, uh, the contribution uh, beyond child alone will estimate the method perception. What, what they did is that they just use the beyond beyond contribution. And then you say, okay, but your PDF, if you are using PDF, which has been extracted in a viable paper of the university, so by definition, you use to you need to include your contribution and your chat contribution. But they just ignore without any uh, application, the young uh, channel, you just your uh, channel, and <laughs> this channel is smaller. And so it compens it's kind of compensation of the fact that you get and so they get in that way they can obtain more or less good results. But in my not in this publication, but in the previous one, I did uh, uh, calculations for the method using beyond uh, uh, and beyond jump contribution, but with a method kind of system of PDF, and I get uh, results with the, which is not, which are much better than. So, so there's a kind of avoid some issues which will be but by introducing just some channels and doing other channels without any this scale. But in the case of deep size solutions, because maybe in this case, a uh, long term contribution is the dominant. Uh, but uh, it is not the case for dinner. Mm -hmm. So you could do. Is this uh, modified kinds of ah yes uh, uh, well, 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 my goal was my goal was not to, to build uh, the best uh, only to create it figure it just to me just a small uh day a small illustrative example that if you change the bits with the definition of this figure in order to fulfill this new uh uh normalization. Then we can solve at once all the issues. Are. But I think that uh, in my case, I do not want to use this PDF. I have to use other set of stuff. Yeah. Okay. What is the problem? See in the Zoom. Um, the people who are in school, there are questions. If there are no more questions, we send the ticket again. And we can do the seminar. Thank you.